Before uh, I start, I just uh, give you some very good news. I only have 12 slides, so it's going to be short. But can I ask first of all, who in here either operates, owns, or sells services to data centres? That's good, because this is important information for you guys. I'm not here to sell any cabling or any other product. I'm just here to give you information which might be useful. Um, if I just flick onto this screen here, you can see that uh, I have a lot of responsibilities in the world of standards. But quite a few of them there are red and it says X. X member, X convener, X chairman, etc. And the reason it says X is because I retire in March next year. So this is my final presentation outside the UK. Great honour for us. Huh? Great honour for us. <laughs> Maybe not for you, but you, you, you can decide. Um, okay. But the, <laughs> the one thing I do want to focus on, on the screen, is the one that says X member, Sen, Senelec, Etsy, CG, Green Data Centres. I used to be a member, and I still am a member, I, I suppose, but the next meeting is after March. This group is responsible for monitoring all standardisation in relation to data centres. And the reason it was established was about five years ago, maybe a little bit more, the European Commission started to take a great interest in the resource consumption, or shall we say the energy consumption, of data centres. They became very, very interested and they issued what we call a standardisation mandate. And that is a, an instruction to all the standards groups in Europe to start thinking about standards in relation to broadband deployment, which part of which is data centres. And then we started work on all the standards on data centres and they lost interest. The European Commission people changed a little bit and they lost a little bit of interest. But every time, every six months, we have a meeting of that Green Data Centre group. And over the last two or three meetings, the European Commission have managed to attend again. And now there is real concern that they're interested in legislation, regulation, directives on the energy or the general resource consumption of data centres. So for those of you involved in data centre ownership, operation or whatever, this is not a good time to be around at the moment. Fortunately we have standards that we've created over the last five years which assist you a little bit and hopefully the European Commission will, if they choose to issue any legal frameworks on resource consumption of data centres, uh, will actually use those standards to control or to, as a basis for their thinking, I hope. But it is a hope, not a guarantee. Okay, so, first of all, let's talk about the EN5600 series. The EN5600 series is actually now one of the most rad rapidly moving set of standards in terms of its growth. We started off whew, five years ago with a number of standards in what we call the EN5602 series. And you can see the, the 5602 series there, power supply and distribution, environmental control, telecommunications cabling, building construction, security systems. Those standards were produced, as you can see, published in 2014, and most recently the top three have been updated, revised in a significant way in 2019. You will also notice that they are also listed with an ISO IEC reference because the ISO IEC guys said, oh, these are wonderful, we like those documents, can we put them into the international standards world? 
which they then did. Even the Americans are very keen on these documents. One of the real reasons the Americans are keen on these documents is because they give the ability to assess a data center in terms of its availability and viability, which does not rely on a third party certification scheme. In other words, anybody can assess a data center under these standards without spending 50,000 euros on a certificate from one proprietary system or another without mentioning any names. So we have, we have three areas, design for availability, design for viability, how viable are they, are they a good data center, and then finally we've got operation to maintain availability and viability. And the reason I mention these is because what people have not been talking about today, but at least I have not heard people talking today, is that if you want a very high availability data center, you will generally use more energy. And that has to be taken into account in any assessment by any organization wishing to discuss energy consumption. So, at the moment, the, the, the ones in yellow, those are the ones that define availability. And I'll give you an example. There's an example of the uh, objectives of the different availability classes, whether we're talking about power supply or power distribution, environmental control or telecommunications cabling. As you go down, as, as, as you go across the screen, you get much more complicated designs, higher levels of availability. But we are talking about the availability of the infrastructure. I notice the title of this group, Data Center Infrastructures networking and services. Well, these are infrastructures. So if I go to the trouble of building a class four environmental control system, but only a class one power supply system, uh, I can say exactly what I've done. But overall, you will have a data center with an infrastructure class one. It's the lowest class that's applicable to any of these, which defines your solution. So those are the rules or the objectives of the latest 2019 documents. I'll give you a very quick, I'm not going to go through these, but these are examples, examples meeting those objectives. This is just for power supply. There's another one for power distribution, there's another one for environmental control, and the, the telecommunications cabling one hasn't changed since 2014, but is now being reviewed with the publication probably in 2021. So, the whole point of these standards is that people can actually use them to determine the availability of their infrastructures or the availability class of their infrastructures, and if they wish to offer that on the marketplace and say, I have a data center with availability class three, then so they can do that. So can anybody else doing the same as assessment. You need to be aware that what we talk about in standards in most of the time is conformity assessment. In other words, do they conform to the standard? This is not a formal certification. This is not like ISO 9000 or ISO 14000 or any, any other official internationally recognized certification scheme. These are just standards. So whether you're hosting, whether you're a, a data center with hosting services, or whether you're an enterprise, you can use these standards to assess your own classification of availability of each infrastructure and overall. So in addition to those things, we also have standards, or at least technical reports, covering best practice. And the best practice for energy management is based on, now no longer has a linkage to, but it's based upon the uh, data center energy efficiency code of conduct practices. But in 2019, the linkage between those two, those two sets of practices is actually broken now. We've actually removed the uh, code of conduct references from the document. So we've got one on energy management, and we've also got one on environmental sustainability. So those two sets of documents contain many hundreds of practices that are not applicable to every data center. They're not, certain practices are applicable to certain types of data center. So they're also published 2019. 
But what those practices do is allow us to take over something that you may or may not have heard of called the data center maturity model. This was developed originally by the Green Grid, and the Green Grid has now handed responsibility for the data center maturity model over to Senelec. And we are in the process of producing a document called Technical Specification 5600-5-1, which is built on those practices that I mentioned on the previous two slides. So a, 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 a particular data center could review their achievements against any of those practices and describe themselves of, as having a maturity level. This isn't, this isn't new, but it's new in terms of standardization. And the reason this is important is because if we do end up having legislation, directives, regulation from the European Commission, we want them to take these factors into account, not to basically have one size, one rule that fits every data centre on earth. You do have to take into account the availability design. You do have to take into account the maturity le level of that data centre. What we also did when we started work on the 5600 series is look at the uh, 5600-4 series. The work in this area actually started in ISO, in ISO IEC. And these are all key performance indicators, things that you recognize, PUE, we met, I heard mentioned earlier on. We also have renewable energy factor. We also have energy reuse factor cooling effectiveness ratio, uh, carbon usage effectiveness, water usage effectiveness. These, some of these standards are due for next year publication. A lot of them are already published. And it's hoped that by having all of these KPIs available to the European Commission guys, that they may take notice of these and decide how they want to actually get data centers to behave. They're not always going to be applicable. I mean, carbon usage effectiveness is a pointless KPI if you're in Norway, because all their power comes from hydro. France has a view on their nuclear program about what the carbon usage effectiveness is. But if you go to Poland, or Eastern Germany, historically, where they've burnt a lot of coal, they'd have really, really bad carbon usage effectiveness. So we've got to t generally take these things into these things take into account the location of the data center and where its power comes from. So those things are all underway or published. So you can see the dates on those. In fact, uh, the 4-6 has actually just been published, and the 4-7, uh, the final voting draft went out yesterday. So that actually may have a deadline in December this year, or it might just creep over. I didn't read, the day. It, might, it might be 2020. So all of these things have been done also under the 5600 series. They all operate on a common understanding of the data center boundaries in terms of electricity, thermal, reuse energy, etc., which is the diagram that's shown there. I'm not going to go into the details of it, but basically they all use the same philosophy so you can actually co correlate one to the other, even though they're, used, they're measuring different things. And finally, I would like to tell you that um, there is a significant cross-fertilization now between Senelec in Europe, which obviously the European Commission would look at U European standards first before they look elsewhere for standards. But there is a great deal of cross-fertilization between Europe and the International Committee. And the International Committee is basically uh, uh, backwards and forwards up and down, passing ideas across. Europe may produce a document, the international community might want to make some improvements and pass it back, and that's what happens. But you can see there that virtually everything we're doing, virtually everything we're doing in Europe, the international community are doing as well. The only thing they aren't doing is the best practices on the right-hand side, best practice for uh, energy management and the best practice for environmental sustainability. And the reason they're not doing that is because they physically can't update them fast enough. Uh, so they, they made a decision not to implement those sorts of standards at international level. Europe can move much faster than the international guys. 
If you want further information, there's a link when you get this presentation pack through the, into your inboxes. We'll get a, you'll get a PDF of this information. The link at the bottom there takes you to what we call the Green Data Center page on, Senelec, on the Senelec website. And that you can download for free every year an updated document which covers all the standardization on data centers in all standards committees. So we've literally just recently uploaded the 2019 version and people are now working on updating it for 2020. So, that is the end of my little presentation. I told you I wasn't going to sell you anything, but if you are interested in data centers or responsible for data centers, please take notice of these standards and have a look at the opportunities they may offer you. Uh, try and use them to your best advantage, just in case people start to use them to regulate your industry. Thank you very much. Um, you, it depends what you want to do. They are standards which you can, you, you, you can look at and say, I'll check the design of this, stand, of this data centre, let's say power supply. I can identify that it's got two primary supplies, it's got two uh, UPSs for that, according to those diagrams, therefore it meets the, I mean there's a lot more obviously, but they are requirements which are defined by the word shall. You shall have, you shall have, you shall have. And as long as you meet the shalls for a level three or a level two or a level four, you can do your own or you do your own self-certification. But who is going to be auditing the claim that we are doing? Nobody. Nobody. But don't be stupid. It would be really, really stupid to go to a client and say, I've got a class three data center for power supply, when he goes and looks at you and you've only got a one incoming power supply and no UPS. So you'd, you'd soon get caught out, but it is for you to use. You buy the standards and it's free for you to use as you wish. If you want to get an external, if you want to get an external person to audit, no problem. There are people out there who will do it, but they're no better than you. That's why standards are written. It's not a certification scheme, it's just a standard. Thank you. Any more, any more questions? I'll leave you to get on with the rest of the day.